Hello, this is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and today we're going to be looking at a very different sort of sculpt. I decided to do a bit of an exercise in dynamic posing in sculpting, so I'm using parts and pieces of geometry to really flesh out a dynamic character. And for that reason I tried a lot of new things. So instead of going directly straight into sculpting, I decided to block this character out a bit more and give it a bit of movement, a bit of character. So I knew I wanted this to be a very feminine person and for them to be running and reaching out towards something. So I blocked it out just using primitives. And I think that's a really good tip. If you are a beginner sculptor and you, or even a modeler, you, you always want to block out and plan your scenes. They don't have to be very elaborate plans. You can just use primitives like what I'm doing. And for more detailed areas such as the hand, you can't, you, that's when you can do a bit of detailing. So in this case, I'm just extruding and scaling. That's literally all I'm doing. Nothing too much, just very simple. At this point, I'm realizing that I made the fingers too long in the first joints. So I had to split them up and separate them into their respective joints, and which was relatively easy. And there I just copy and pasted the hand directly onto the other hand by just positioning using the 3D cursor. Which is always what you want to do. You always want to reduce the time that you need to be making these things. You don't want to spend a long time. So I'm just rotating the fingers now just to give them a bit of liveliness. And making final details and touches to the overall shape there I just rotated the body a bit more down just to give it the feeling of having a bit more speed and urgency behind it. So finally after a really long time I, I finally start sculpting. <laughs> and it really isn't all too different from my other sculpting videos. I do try and make an effort this time to really keep the mouth in proportion to the eyes, so where the pupils are, or where the, sorry, where the eyes start. Instead of having my well, really wide lips that I'm quite terrible at doing all the time. I'm just blocking in the shoulder blades now and really giving it a bit more form. Here you can see that now I'm really focusing on getting those lips the right proportion. I, I, I'm not happy with the lips still. I feel lips are one of my, definitely one of the weakest areas of my artwork, but I'm going to be working on that quite intensively over the next few weeks. I think for the, my next attempt at creating a figure such as this, I will definitely separate it into parts so I won't uh, bully in the objects too soon, especially the head, or because I f feel that really, uh, that really messed me up later in the sculpt, which you won't see in this part. Uh, because the head's actually just ever so slightly offset, was really difficult to put in finer details later because I, well, I made, it's a very rookie error, but I made it, and I'm going to admit to that. <laughs> now you may notice that I'm really trying to give the body a sense of movement by curving a lot of the features and making sure that it feels alive, like it feels like this person's really running towards something. And I feel that was a really good effect and it, as an exercise it was really effective and I learned a lot from it. But in saying that I spent way too long on it and in retrospect I should have given myself a much more harsher time limit, let's say an hour or two and said I'm going to do this in this amount of time and then that's it and then I should have just thrown it away. This was an on and off work for a couple of just over two weeks. Granted in real time it's around three maybe maybe three and a half hours so not too long but I should have crunched that time down much more and done it in one sitting instead. Another reason I should have done it in one sitting was because I was a bit of a fool and I lost a lot of the recording files. So right now there's going to be a bit of a jump. There is a jump. And this is the part where I'm trying to fix my mistake with the face. So I 
I had a lot of errors in the face and so I had to cut out the face and try and reconnect the new cleaned up face. So this is just me boolean a sphere to the uh, head. Not very successfully the first time I might add. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't work out what was going on then I realized that the sphere still had faces inside the geometry so I had to go back and redo that. But it goes to show you really have to plan these things out. You really have to always make sure that you're on top of things and yeah, you're going to make mistakes. And I think learning from them is one of the, the best parts. So here I am just getting on with it, cleaning it up and moving on. I don't complete this sculpt, unfortunately. I thought I'd spent more than enough time on it and yeah. I'm happy that with the way it turned out it looks like a dynamic person running and for an exercise in dynamic posing I think I think it worked out well and I'm, I'm really happy with the result and there yeah, that's where I got to with it I'm really happy with how dynamic it looks I, I feel that it feels alive and it feels like that person's actually running towards something they're reaching out I'm happy with how much I've learned during this exercise if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like more content like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com, signing off.